Today I'll show you how you can make the two character media block a little more interactive in Adobe Captivate 12. I don't recall where I saw it, but either it was on the forums or as a comment in one of my videos, uh, someone was concerned about the two character media block. They didn't really know what it was for. They found it uh, strange how to configure it and uh, wanted to know if there was some way that it could be made into something more interactive. So today's video, I'm going to show you my take on how you can turn this simple media block into something that your learners can actually interact with. To save us some time here, I've kind of built the skeletal structure of this interaction for us here. And let me show you how I did that. First of all, I added a text block here, specifically the paragraph text block with the title and the body selected so that I could give this slide a name, obviously a title, if you will, and uh, a description of what to do. So I'm giving them some basic instructions up here. This is just a standard two character block here, media block, if you will. And uh, I've replaced the images of the characters with some, you know, cut off at the waist sort of images here. And I've customized the word balloons associated with each of these characters. And uh, you could do other things as well, but this is what works for me. By the way, on my slide itself, I used a blurred background of an office environment. Uh, again, with responsive design, one of the challenges is, is that these characters won't always appear standing on the floor. So by blurring the background, it kind of gets rid of that. And also by showing only, uh, you know, a waist level and above image, uh, it also hides the fact that they could be anywhere on this slide, of course, when we're done. But that's okay. So the other thing I've done is I've created a multi-posed character with this first one here. So if we view the poses for this character, I've added a second pose where it's exactly the same image except grayed out, which will just be used to give our learners a visual indication that you've already clicked on this person, because that's what we're going to do. We're going to click on this person here. Let's close that down. And uh, I have my second character and their second uh, word balloon, if you will. And I've made them not visible in output by clicking on the show during publish icon and making it so that you see a little slash through that. So they're not visible when we first arrive on this slide. Same thing with the word balloon associated with them, not visible when we arrive on this slide here. Now down below, I've done exactly the same thing. I've got a second state for my character here, who's obviously also a customer service representative. Let's just return these both back to normal and close the poses here. And my second character on the second interaction is also not visible in output and nor is their word balloon uh, visible. It's turned off for right now. Down at the bottom here, I added a button block and I added a second button. And if you hover over this, you can change the layout to distribute the buttons uniformly. You can do little things too, like one of the things I've seen some people do is reduce the content width if you prefer the buttons, you know, closer together or less far apart, whatever you want to say. And of course, with this second one here, I've also not made it visible in output because we're going to use forced navigation. We want the learners to click on these first characters before we reveal the second characters. And we don't want them skipping to the next slide. I'll assign some triggers uh, and actions to these buttons once I have additional slides. So I'll go to the previous slide, go to the next slide, and that's all done through the interactions panel here. So let's go ahead and uh, do one last thing to our interaction here. One of the things that's going to be important is because we don't want people to skip forward until they've clicked on the interaction, I've turned off my play bar, so they won't have an opportunity to do that. Alternatively, you could simply just turn off the next button. But uh, in this case here, I'm going to give them their own controls in every slide so that they don't need to worry about that. All right, so let's start building this interaction. Right now, it's just a bunch of pretty pictures. So let's click on the first character here and go over to the interactions panel. 
and we'll click on add an interaction. The trigger in this case is clicking on the characters or tapping if they're on a mobile device. And the first thing we want to do is we want to show our set of two additional objects here. So we're going to click on show. And this is a little confusing at first, but this character here, this cutout character is an object. However, this mixture of a shape with some text falls under content section. So you're going to need to jump back and forth. So with this one here, and sometimes hard to tell, but the great thing about Adobe Captivate is when you're selecting an object to show or hide or, or be a part of your interaction, just move your mouse around and it will highlight the objects that you're working with here. In this case here, this character speech item here. And now I can move over to objects and we can find our character as well. So we could kind of do both at the same time. We're showing both of them. And that's something that's new for the all new Adobe Captivate as well. I'm going to click next. And the last thing we can do is we can animate that appearance as well, which is kind of fun. We can go into animations and you can choose any of the animations that are here. This fade forward is kind of nice. So I'm going to select that and I can click done at this point here. The other thing I want to do is I want to change the image of my character to that grayscale version of that image. So let's click on add new action, set state, and we'll select the character here. And we will choose that we'll send them to the disabled version of that pose or state, if you will. So I can click done now, and that's finished. If you want to, I don't think it's necessary in this case, but if you wanted to really prevent people from clicking on that actual button a second time, it's not really needed here. There is an action, and this might apply to you reinterpreting this interaction for your own purposes, but you could actually disable that as a button once they've clicked on it once. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to discard that portion of my little interaction here because I don't think it's really necessary. Now, I need to do the same thing to the second version of this interaction here. But let me show you a shortcut that is unique and new for the all new Adobe Captivate. Let's right click on my character, which is really my first button. And I can copy the interactions, which is kind of cool. And I can select my second character and we can right click and paste interactions. Now we'll need to change it because obviously it's working with other objects, but it saves us a little bit of time in figuring out what we need to perform, what actions we need to perform here. So if I edit the first action, we can click on show and we can go to content sections and instead of the top word balloon, we can just move down until we find the second one because that's the one we want to show. And we'll go to objects here and instead of the first character from the first half of the slide, we're going to show this person down here and then we can click next. The fade forward is already selected from the previous interaction. So all we need to do now is click done. And the last thing we need to do is change which object we're changing the poses or multi states for. So I'm going to select that and we'll click on the edit the target item and we'll choose this guy instead and show the disabled version there and click next and then done. Now that leaves us with one last thing to perform. How do we show this next button once we've clicked on these items? In the past, what I would have done is I would have also updated a user variable with a value to keep track of what's been clicked. You don't need to do that in the all new Adobe Captivate because you can add a slide level interaction, essentially an event listener for when these two buttons have been clicked. So if I select my slide over here so that none of the objects are selected, I can click on the plus icon over under slide interactions and we can decide, okay, what's going to trigger this final interaction. In this case here, 
you know, it's not slide enter, slide exit, bookmark, anything like that. Uh, we could use custom states viewed, but this might be easier. Which objects have been pressed? So we're going to select that and we're going to choose the two characters that we're using. So once you've clicked on those items, click next. And at that point, once both those have been clicked, we're going to show the next button. One thing I really love about Captivate 12 is that it gives you these visual cues as to what you're selecting. In the past, one of my biggest problems, if I didn't take the time to properly label all my objects, I wouldn't know the difference between button 18, button 19, asset one, text 14. They would all just be you know, randomly chosen names. But here I can visually see it. It also helps too, because as I roll over this, if you look at my screen itself, it highlights that next button there. So that's a great benefit. Click next, and we don't really need any animation on that. You could if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna click done. So this slide is really good to go. Let's just do a preview and see how it works. Okay, so let's play that. So we have our first character block here, and when we click on the character, they fade in with the alternative way you could say it, and you see it kind of grays out the first person there. Let's scroll down, choose our second guy. Notice our next button is not there. Let's click this guy, he turns gray, and we got the nice fade in effect of a better example. And now we have our next button, and we're ready to move forward. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.